Welcome to the Good News Radio broadcast. Hello, this is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. Before Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. You can read all the books of the Bible and come to the understanding that each book tells us something very important, great, and powerful. The book of Ecclesiastes is one of those books. It offers a viewpoint of life that we should all look into. Let's take a look at what we can learn. I thought it interesting in the book of Ecclesiastes that the writer is trying to figure out the meaning of life. The book was written by Son of David, which has been concluded by scholars as Solomon. Ecclesiastes means the preacher. This preacher is saying that in life, you eat, you drink, you sleep, and do all the regular routine things of life. Solomon begs the question, why? What is life's purpose? He wants to know where he can find the meaning of life. In essence, he says, I've tried it all, and I still feel empty. He says, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Have you ever considered the question, what is the meaning of it all? I have. What am I doing here? Will I just live for a while and then die one day? Is that what it's all about? Our human lives go in cycles. We're born and we go to school, we work, we marry, and most of us live a pattern of life like that. Even the ones that are rich enough to jet set around the world and do different things will finally come to an end one day. They may even ask themselves the question, if they sit still long enough, what is my purpose? Solomon tried all sorts of diversions to make himself happy. He tried entertainment of all kinds. Still, at the end, he asked the same question. What is the meaning of life? One of the most famous verses in the Bible is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8 where it says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose, under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. I remember my mom saying one time that someone asked her why she didn't speak up about something that had happened in this class. And mama's reply was that the Bible says there is a time to speak and then there's a time to keep your big mouth shut. Well, that's true. I can think of some times that it would have been better if I had kept my big mouth shut. The Bible says that the person who can control his tongue is very wise. An out-of-control tongue can start a world of hurt and strife. You've probably found that to be true. The preacher tells us in Ecclesiastes that life can seem unfair. The wicked seems to be prospering while the righteous doesn't seem to be as well off. Solomon goes through a list of things that happen to us in life until we find ourselves in old age. He says, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Let's take a look at some of the metaphors in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and see what they possibly represent. He says, the keepers of the house tremble. That could mean the hands begin to tremble and shake in old age. He says, the strong men bow down. That can mean our legs grow weak and weary when we get older. He says, the grinders cease. That could be referring to the loss of teeth. He says, those that look through the windows grow dim. That means failing eyesight. He says, one rises at the sound of a bird. That could refer to the inability to sleep and the slightest noise becomes bothersome. He says they are afraid of heights. That could mean even a step or a curb 
can become an obstacle. He says the almond tree blossoms. That could refer to when your hair turns gray when you get older. He talks about desire failing. That could be the loss of romantic love or passion. Or it could possibly refer to the lack of pleasure in life in general. I can relate to that because I'm in my 60s and I don't like to get out much like I used to. And I'm beginning to relate to the above descriptions. I used to be a go-getter when I was young in my 20s and 30s, 40s. And I used to be out and about all the time, hardly ever at home. And now, in my 60s, taking a nap at home sounds like paradise to me. I'm a homebody now, and I just love to stay at home now. So what is the meaning of life? We are born, and then 50, 60, 70, 80 years later, whenever it is, we die if we live long enough. So what is life's meaning? Solomon left us with a feeling of futility about the whole thing. But at the very end of the book, Solomon gives us the answer to our question. He sums it up by saying, Fear God and keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. To fear God, to respect Him, to show Him honor is the most important thing that a person can ever do. If you do that, then you will fulfill your purpose in life. The reason that it's so important to understand is because there is a life to come. Our soul never dies. We will live on after this life. We can get fulfillment by giving our lives to God while we are here on this earth. But our future destiny will reflect the decision that was made while on this earth. The question is, will you believe the words of Solomon and seek meaning to life by giving your life to God? Giving your life to God is the only way that you will find true meaning to life. And now this concludes the message today. Again, this is Brenda Harris, blessing you in Christ's name. May God's face shine upon you and show you His great favor.